I want you to turn your Bibles to a couple of different passages of Scripture. Um, I'm going to just read one verse out of Proverbs chapter 14, and then I'm going to read my main text out of Luke chapter number 15, and uh, a couple of, by way of announcements, this goes back to our hurricane, but now if you were without electricity for any length of time, Brother Matt Geiger has found out that there are some assistance that would be available for you. And so if you're interested in getting some assistance, uh, please see Brother Geiger. Also, there, if you need food, the Department of Children and Families, which is food for the Florida program, for people who do not receive food stamps, they're offering an assistance in helping salvage any food that was lost at the fairgrounds. And so these are great opportunities that if you can benefit from that, do so. Also, our homeless community, or what is called the Tent City, many of them lost everything in the storm. They have nowhere to go. And uh, so we're going to make just a real quick announcements here, but Sister, Sister, uh, I'll just call her Sister Chestnut. How about that? I think you'll know who you're talking about. Shauna, she, uh, she wants to, have, she has this great idea for outreach. And so we're asking for anybody that could help just put together one bag that's going to be full of some hygiene items, socks, toothbrush, toothpaste, razors, any items that the Lord may lead you to put in the bag. And then she's going to be handing these out as care packages on the weekend of October the 28th, which just happens to coincide with our Friends Day the next day. Amen. And I think that would be a really good opportunity to really serve somebody that could have a blessing and then invite them to come to church on Sunday. And so we'll help them physically and then get them here on Sunday and God will help them spiritually. And I just believe there's a great revival there. And, and who knows, we may even start a church out of Tent City one day. And we're supposed to, as we heard today, not to be content. And thank you, Bishop Arnold, for that message this morning. We appreciate it. And we don't want to settle down. We want to reach higher. Amen? Uh, so let's... Uh, you know, Brother Ryan mentioned fast days, so miss a meal or two tomorrow. That would be great. Amen. Uh, none of us are going to die from that. Amen. I, I We're with you. Our stomach may growl a time or two, but, but we'll be all right. I was thinking this morning as Brother Arnold was preaching, and he was talking about just getting enough to get by. You know, vaccinations are similar to that. You'll go get a flu shot or some type of vaccination, and they'll put a they'll put the real stuff in you. But it's just enough to keep you from getting the real thing. And there's too many people who get Christianity vaccinations. They get a little bit put in them. But it's just enough to keep them from getting the real thing. I say bring it on, Lord. Amen? Bring it on, Lord. The Lord began to talk to me last Sunday night as I was sitting in board meetings at headquarters or at a general conference I should say and while they're up there shaping the movement I was back with my computer shaping a sermon and uh, it seemed to work well and the Lord's just kind of been all week talking to me about this and so I feel like he wants to talk to us tonight Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 14 says the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Right. A backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. Right. Luke chapter number 15 and verse 1 is really the area I want to spend most of our time tonight. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost, until he find it. Amen. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Amen. 
Now it has become a burden, but he's rejoicing about it. Right. Oh. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Amen. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. Amen. I want to just preach tonight on this thought, the value of one lost sheep. Amen. That's good. The value of one lost sheep. Sister Ava, it's great to have you here worshiping with us. Wave your hand so everybody can see you. Sister Ava is going to make this her home church. And I believe God's got great things in store. If you're going to help me preach, amen. 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 Be seated. Feels good to be home. Feels good to be back in the in the pulpit at the Pentecostals and Gainesville. Let me begin tonight by declaring that each of you are important to the kingdom of God. I would hate to see this church without you. Amen. You are valuable. You are needed. You are wanted. And most importantly, you bring something of great value to the table that I don't bring. Yet, it is needed at the table. Amen. Saints have often been portrayed as sheep, and that makes sense to me because sheep were a necessary and important commodity in biblical days. Just like each of you are a necessary and important commodity in the kingdom of God and in this church. Wouldn't be much of a shepherd without any sheep. That's right. God anointed David while he was leading sheep. I still believe that God has a special anointing for a pastor who will lead the sheep that God gives him. And with the help of the Lord, I want and I need the anointing to lead this form. So I want to preach tonight as a pastor. I don't want to be an evangelist tonight. I don't want to speak as a prophet. I'm not here as an executive from headquarters. Amen. <laughs> or as an apostle. Tonight I want to address you as your shepherd. As your pastor. As a man that is desirous to see you saved, healed, and delivered. Amen. But not just you. I want to see those who have backslid come back to God. And I want to see those who have never heard this truth to hear, believe, and receive, and allow God's Word to radically transform their life. I guess what I'm trying to say is I want to see the church be the church. I want to see God show off His power. And I want to see the glory of God invade this city until every stronghold is pulled down and His name is made famous in this world. So we have gathered here to not play church but rather to see God do what only God can do. And I know at any given time there are various people sitting on our pews or watching us online who 
have suffered from various things in the world. So I, I'd be very, I'm very cautious here to not try to be rude or disrespectful to anyone. But, but one of the most horrific realities of abortion is the fact that we never know who we are murdering. That's right. It's true. What I mean by that is some of the problems that our world is facing right now might have been and could have been possibly resolved had we not murdered what was intended to help us. That's true. And not to be too overly graphic or to be accused of toying with someone's emotions, but when a person backslides and leaves the church, it is as if the devil has just performed a spiritual abortion and has taken the life of a precious lamb that the flock so desperately needed. And some of the problems that the church world might be facing and some of the voids that might be present in our local assembly might have been and could have been possibly resolved had the enemy not murdered what was intended to help us. That's good. So I walk to this pulpit tonight to declare to each of us that we must open our hearts of compassion and we must open the doors to this church and we must make room on our pews for the lost sheep that are among this community and welcome them back to the flock and the family of God. I want to preach to you tonight that God wants to give us a harvest, a revival, a great awakening in the arena of people who used to walk with God, who used to live a godly lifestyle, who used to support the church, but for whatever reason, they have wandered off and become one of the lost sheep. Thank God for everybody that stayed. We commend you. We honor you. We love you. We wouldn't be here without you, but we are racing the rapture, and we are in competition with the hell that is steadily enlarging itself. And it's time we get on a mission to reach every lost sheep possible and make sure that there is a, a return to the flock of God because every lost soul is valuable to the people. There is value in one lost Our text said they drew near unto him. All or all the publicans and sinners then drew near unto him to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. There could be worse things on your resume. I think it is significant that Jesus attracted sinners. While the Pharisees repelled them. What does this say about most of our churches today? I want you to understand. Lost sinners came to Jesus. Not because He catered to them. Or compromised His message. But because He cared for them. He understood their needs. And He tried to help them. And yet the Pharisees criticized them and kept their distance from them as if they had leprosy or some plague. Yep. Tell me about it. So what are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm saying we must create an atmosphere, an environment, a safe place where sinners would desire to come to this church. Amen. Not because we're going to turn a blind eye to their sin, but because we're going to extend a loving hand to help them break the vicious cycle that controls so many. It's okay for sinners to come to the house of God. Jesus. 
Jesus was attracted to him. The Pharisees treated him just the opposite. As a matter of fact, the Pharisees were so messed up. This is how they would pray in Luke chapter 18. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed, God, I thank Thee that I am not as other men. I can just hear him in the prayer room at the church of that day. Extortioners. Uh, unjust. Uh, adulterers. Uh, you know, that's, that's really anointed praying when you get to us. <laughs> or even as this public. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift so much his eyes into heaven, but beat his chest, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You see, the Pharisees had a knowledge of the Old Testament law, and they had a desire for personal purity, which nothing wrong with either. Yet, they had no love for the lost. That's right. That's right. And this might be the exact trap that I see so many Pentecostals falling into. We know the book, and we need to know the book. We're striving to be holy, and we need to strive to be holy. But in all the knowing and in all the striving, we must be willing to love and to serve and minister to those that are lost among us. Aren't you glad that when God saved you, there wasn't someone there condemning you and holding every past over your head and reminding you of everything you need, but you found somebody that would pray with you and teach you and help you and love you? If that's the kind of church you want me to help me build in this city, I want you to clap your hands up. So as the church, we are not here to condemn or complain. We are here to seek and to save that which was lost. We're here to show the love of Christ. So let's keep reading in our text. Verse 4, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine until he goes and finds the one that he lost, and he returns with them on his shoulders rejoicing and when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Three words that are kind of the common theme in this little story. They're the words lost, found, rejoice. Right. Amen. Jesus spoke this parable to answer the accusations of the Pharisees and scribes who were shocked at His behavior, that He would eat and speak with sinners and publicans. It was bad enough that Jesus welcomed these outcasts and taught them, but, but He went so far as to eat with them. This is how we're going to help restore the lost. Yep. Brother Gleason said this week at General Conference that the way Jesus reached people was by turning sinners into friends. Yes. And friends into disciples. And disciples into disciple makers. See, we don't have a problem in Gainesville with sinners. And we don't have a backsliding problem in Gainesville. But we might not be doing so good in the arena of befriending those who was once part of the kingdom of God. And I know we've got a lost world to reach. And I want to be part of a church that's global. But this is what I felt the Lord speak to me this week. Before we reach around the world, we need to make sure we're doing everything we can to reach out to those locally who used to worship with us. Do you 
have Bible for this? I do, thank you. Listen to how emphatic Jesus was to His disciples in Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What Jesus was saying was before you go to those who have never been part of the house, you go find those lost sheep. Those who used to be part of this covenant relationship. Those who used to be part of the family of God. And you go minister to them before you go minister to somebody else that's never heard of the gospel. we'd hit a brick wall right there and that's fine because the Lord wanted me to tell you that He is ready to pour His Spirit out on whosoever will. But there are some that's just waiting on somebody to come and find them and bring them back to the Father. I feel a rustling in my spirit and I pray it jumps on you as well. stories about someone or something being lost. There was a lost coin. There was the lost sheep. There was the lost son. The coin was in the house, just displaced in the house. The prodigal willingly left the father's house. It was his own accord. But the lamb just somehow Maybe it was an oversight of the shepherd. Maybe he should have paid more attention to that particular lamb. Maybe it was foolishness on the part of the lamb. Maybe the lamb should have paid more attention to the flock. But whatever the case, and whatever the reason, we have a lost lamb. The Bible teaches us that, that sheep tend to go astray. The prophet said it like this in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And then the apostle Peter echoed those sentiments. But he added a positive slant when he said, 1 Peter chapter 2, For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned, but are now returned. Unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Thank you, Jesus. And then it's repeated again and again. Listen to this. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 22. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. But behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Hosea 14 and 4. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for my anger is turned away from him. So I want to implore you to join with me in not focusing on why they left. Right, 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 that's right. But to understand that there is a returning spirit 
that's about to hit this church. Yeah. Telling you, God told me that there's going to be the next wave of revival that He wants to give Gainesville. It's people who once were here, but somehow wandered off. He said, You tell those people there's a returning spirit. fast. I'm going to read it again. Return you backsliding children. And I will heal. Listen to what it says. Your backslidings. Oh, Sister Geiger, now I think as I was perusing through this text, as I was studying intently this text, that I'm pretty sure that S on the end of backsliding means that you may have done it more than once. <laughs> and that's the danger of divorce. Because you ever get one divorce, it's easier to get a second divorce. And that's the danger of backsliding. Because you ever backslide once, it's easier to backslide again. But the Lord said, I'm going to go ahead and heal. When I hit that church with that returning spirit, we're not just going to bring them in. So they'll backslide again. But when they come back this time, I'm going to go ahead and heal it. Whatever it was that they don't believe, I'm going to heal that. Whatever it is that keeps tripping their body, I'm going to heal that. Whatever it is that keeps tripping their body, I'm going to heal that. Come on, this ought to make some mom and daddy happy. There's a returning spirit. This ought to make somebody happy. This ought to give somebody hope. There's a returning spirit. Because there's value in just one motion. I know you might label me after I say this, but 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 some of you, if you're really honest, you were late, and you remember when we were all teenagers. I remember when I was a teenager. 88 reasons why the Lord's coming again in 88. Some guy predicted the Lord was coming this past Saturday. Now he's changed it. Now it's October 21st. So you got all these predictions and all these things. But when I was a teenager, I, I'll just be honest with you. When I was a teenager, I didn't want the Lord to come back. Yeah. Okay. No, I wanted to go. I wanted to finish school. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to get my driver's license. I wanted to get married. Yep. I wanted all the benefits of marriage. All right. <laughs> so I was, I was so concerned that that I wouldn't be able to do all that all right. if, if the Lord came back. Now, here we are, 22 years after being married. You call me crazy, but I really haven't changed the whole life. And I know you're going to label me, but I still don't want the Lord to come back yet. Yep, that's right. Go ahead. We've got loved ones. That's right, man. And we got to get in the boat before the door shuts. We got prodigals that need to come home. We got sheep that we need to leave these comfortable pews and go find and bring them back to the family of God. So I want to challenge you and remind you that if the Lord returns now, it would only benefit us that are saved. And it would eternally damn those that are lost. So the carnal cries, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. 
Because I don't want to go through anything. I don't want any more suffering. I'm ready to go. But that wasn't what Jesus said in John chapter 17. He said, my prayer is not that you take them out of this world, but that you protect them from the evil one. God doesn't want the church to have a disappearing act. He wants the church to have a demonstration of the book of Acts. You can cry about your situation if you want to. You can have an escape mentality if you want to. You can look for a way out if you want to. But I'm looking for revival. I'm looking for another Bible study. I'm looking for a church writer that needs to come back home. I'm looking for somebody that needs to hear the gospel. So yes, we want the Lord to come. But if He comes right now, some of our family doesn't make it. Until our cry for our family becomes greater than our desire to get out of here. We're never going to have the move of God that we can have. But if we can get hungry for God to let lead us and guide us to some lost. That's right. You see, the scribes and Pharisees had no problem seeing the publicans and sinners as lost sheep. But they would never apply that image to themselves. History would teach us that the shepherd was responsible for each sheep. If one was missing, the shepherd would have to pay for it. Unless he could prove that it was killed by a predator. That was written in the rule book. Exodus chapter 22 says, If a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass or an ox or a sheep or any beast to keep and it die or be hurt or driven away, no man seeing it, then shall an oath of the Lord be between them both that he hath not put his hand unto his neighbor's goods and the owner of it shall accept thereof and he shall not make it good. And if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. If it, if it be torn in pieces, then let him bring it for a witness. Then he shall not make good that which was torn. So this explains why the shepherd would lead the flock to the other shepherds. To go and search for that missing animal. Yes. And this also explains why he would be rejoicing when he found it. Yes. So I'm not going to have to pay for it now. I'm going to be able to give an account. I'm not going to be known as a careless shepherd. And so by leaving the 90 and 9, the shepherd was not saying that they were unimportant to him. He was saying, you are safe. You're okay. You're going to be fine. But there's a lost sheep that's in danger. And we need to get to him before the wolf gets to him. Amen. So I'm going to leave you right here. Not because you're not important, but because you are safe. And I'm going to go and I'm going to find that lost person. Listen to me. Every one of you that are here, we are safe here. We are okay now. We are fine here. But I'm looking for somebody that will say, Pastor, I will join you. Let's get go get that loved one. Let's go reach for that backslider. Before we reach new people, let me first this week go find somebody that's just waiting on someone to tell them you're still welcome here. tell you this. When God starts restoring backsliders, He will also start reusing yes. backsliders. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because God does not restore anything. He doesn't intend to reuse. Too many times we think that someone's backsliding completely disqualifies them from ever enjoying the things of God again. No way. Listen to me. We do not believe in eternal security. We do not believe once you're saved, you're always saved. Which to be fair, to flip the coin, we also do not believe that once you're lost, you're always lost. Once you've walked out, you can never walk back in. That's a lie from hell. And I'm 
know there's probably backsliders watching the webcast right now. I've come to tell you, God said, come on back. I'm not done with you. God does not restore anything He doesn't plan on reusing. The prodigal received the robe, which means he dressed like everybody else in the house. That's right. He received a ring, which means he had authority in the house. Yes. God gave him a, pair, brand, a brand new pair of shoes, which means he's about to walk into new destiny. All right. And then the prodigal was part of the rejoicing, which means he was part of the worship in the house. Four things that every backslider needs. A robe, a ring, a pair of Reeboks. <laughs> Alliterations. And somebody to rejoice with. Amen. Every backslider that's out there right now, they're just looking for somebody to come and find them and let them know there's a robe there, there's a ring there. God can change your shoes and you can come and still worship and be part of the family of God. Good. Let me take it a step further. Naomi was a backslider. She left the house of bread and searched for sustenance elsewhere. Because of this decision, she buried her husband and her sons as a result of her backsliding. But that didn't stop her from coming back. Nobody pointed a finger at her and said, we're going to call you Mara. We're going to call you bitter. We're going to point our finger and tell you if you wouldn't have left, you wouldn't have had to bury this, you wouldn't have had to bury that. So we're just going to look at you and we're going to call you Naomi. We're going to restore you back to who you were. And when she came back, she introduced Ruth to Boaz. And Ruth becomes part of the bloodline of Jesus Amen. Christ. You hear me when I tell you, don't you turn your nose up at backsliders who are coming back home. They're going to be restored like the prodigal son. And they're going to bring connection. They're going to bring connections we'd have never had any other way. And that's not a justification of their Sliding, but the God I'm serving is still able to take our worst situations and somehow turn it into His good. What the enemy did for evil, God means for good. All things work together for good. Even if you backslid, even if you got messed up, God can bring you back and work it for you. So which one of you having a hundred sheep Lose. This church has lost more than one. He doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me. For I have found my sheep. Which was lost. Amen. When the lost sheep is found, when that person comes back to God, there ought to be some rejoicing. And there ought to be some shouting. And there ought to be some excitement in the house of God. What I'm afraid we're going to contend with is that older brother spirit. We never left. We've been here the whole time. Thank God you didn't leave. We needed you to stay. The church wouldn't have kept the doors open if it wasn't for you. But we're racing the rapture of the church. We just got to rejoice and thank God that they're back before the rapture. And let God heal. Yes. But here's what I want you to understand about the lost didn't come back on his own. He said, you got to leave the 90 and 9. Now the prodigal son rebelled, walked out. He's got to come back on his own. He's got to go sow his oats, so to speak. He's got to waste all his inheritance. He'll come back on his own. But I'm talking about the lamb that just got offended. 
that God hurt. That there was a misunderstanding. That he got caught up in some situation. Yep. That she fell into some situation. Here's my prayer today. That God will give us spiritual people that can help us go and restore those who have fallen into sin. Amen. Yes, we got to have outreach teams. And yes, we've got to go into neighborhoods. And yes, we've got to invite people. But we also need an outreach team that's just going to focus on those who used to sit on this church. Because I would hate to know how many hundreds. It wasn't necessarily that the, that the sheep couldn't remember where the flock was, per se. But maybe if you'll just let me speculate, maybe the poor lamb just wondered if he would ever be welcomed back. That's right. After all, I'm the one that wandered off. I'm the one that probably should have been more spiritual, and I'm the one that shouldn't have been offended, and I'm the one that should... And I just don't... Man, I've been out for so long. I don't look like what they look like anymore. I don't talk like what they talk. Well, that ain't never stopped a sinner from coming in. Good. That's good. So, man, the Lord just, you know, I feel like he was just talking to me this week saying that's that's the next wave of revival I want to give that church. All right. Now. I just want to bring somebody's children home. I want to bring somebody's parents home. I want to bring some people that got sideways somewhere. I want, to, I want to somehow bring them home, but I'm looking for somebody who will go and keep searching until. But we like the comfort of the 90 and 9. But the one is so scared. It's in such a dangerous place. Throw this next verse up on the screen. I, the Lord showed me this and it just blew my mind. Psalms chapter 119 and verse 176. David said, I've gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Right. Listen to that. Psalms 119 verse 176. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Right. Seek thy servant. For I do not forget thy commandments. <laughs> Listen to the prayer of the backslider. Yeah, just leave it up there for a few minutes. Let everybody see it. I've gone astray like a lost sheep. This is the prayer of a backslider. Seek thy servant, for I have not forgotten thy commandments. The prayer of the backslider is I've gone astray. I've messed up. I have erred. I sinned. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. And then he said, Seek for me. Because I still remember. Amen. The commandments of the Lord. That's good. That's the cry of a backslider in this city right now. Seek for me. Seek for me. It's not that I don't remember the address of the church. I just don't know if I'm welcomed back there. I just don't know if I've got the strength to walk back in. Would somebody seek for me? Seek for me. I know I'm not in church tonight, but seek for me. I know I haven't been there in years, but there's a backslider praying right now. Seek for me. Don't forget about me. Don't write me off. I still remember thy commandments. I still remember that Jesus named baptism is the only way. I still remember how the Holy Ghost felt. I still remember how I used to live right. I'm backslid now. I went astray now. But somebody please be willing to leave the hell. us to stand all over this place tonight. We're going to do altar call a little different. I've printed out several of these. It says, Dear Pastor, understanding the urgency of the hour and understanding that God has a strong desire for us to reach the lost sheep before we go into the world, 
I'm asking you, Pastor, to join me in praying for. Then there's a place for a name and an address and a phone number and a cell number and an email address. Then it says, is this person related to you? Yes or no? If yes, how? And if you'll give me permission by giving me back this form, I will do everything I can to leave the healthy and go find that one lost. Because there's value. Right. Yes, we want to go to the Gentiles. And yes, we want to go into Samaria. And yes, we want to reach around the world. But there are some lost sheep of the house of Gainesville. Amen. Amen. People that used to stand on this platform. People that used to play these instruments. People that used to teach those Sunday school classrooms. People that used to stand in that foyer greeter. People that used to carry these baskets and receive the offering. People that used to sit on those pews. People that used to clap their hands. And listen to me now. It could be us tomorrow. That's right. It could be us getting all messed up and wandering off in six weeks. So before we get all holy, we're safe. We're here. But there's somebody drinking alcohol tonight. Amen. They used to speak in tongues. There's somebody running around half naked. They used to be God. And the prayer of the backslider is, I've gone astray. But sing for me. Come find me. I'm looking for somebody that will reach down. That's why I think this month as we're focusing on Friends Day and Family Day and trying to get people to the house of God that it would be so great because you never know what one service can do for somebody. That's right. right. Yes. We're going to preach this morning. It just takes one time for the Holy Ghost to just yep. and begin to change everything. I know the very first Monday night prayer meeting we had, we put an emphasis on backsliding. And we prayed. We had this altar full of people that had backs with children and loved ones. And I'm not just trying to toy with your emotions. But before we go to the Gentiles, let's cast a net to the lost sheep Absolutely. of the house of Gains. Amen. Amen. People that have gone astray, but people that remember yeah. His commandments. That's right. Yeah, but I don't think they want to come back. You don't know that. You just help me go find them. And let's invite them to come back. Yep. Actually, the shepherd didn't ask. He just threw the old sheep on the shoulder. Right. <laughs> so you just need to take that loved one, throw him on the shoulder, and say, I'm not going to let you go to hell That's like this. Right. Jesus is coming. We're raising the rapture of the church. And before we say, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. God, let me get up out of the comfort of the 90 and 9. And let me be willing to go find that one lost soul before you come back. Because if you come back tonight, my loved one's not going to make it. I got some brothers that's not going to make it. I got some family that's not going to make it. I got some cousins that's not going to make it. They all used to be in church. They all used to speak in tongues. But somehow, they're the lost sheep. But God, if you'll just give me a little bit of time. If you'll give me, I'll do everything I can to reach out to the lost. Those in the highways and byways. So see, those... The publicans and the sinners that came and sat down there with Jesus. Those were all Jews. They're all Jews. Those were all people that were somewhat connected to the Abraham covenant. Yep. And somehow they had just wandered off and they'd stopped practicing this and doing that. And the Lord was trying to say, You scribes and Pharisees, you got it. You are ready. You fast twice a week, you pay tithes on everything you got. You got a rotten attitude, you got a horrible prayer like the way you pray but you're, you're you know you feel like you're well you don't need a doctor he said but there's some that have disconnected from the family of god 
And yes, the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out to the Gentiles. And yes, we're going to go into Samaria. But before we do that, we're going to try to get everybody of the, the, of the lost sheep of the house of Israel saved. Yes, we're going to go into the world. Yes, we're going to teach Bible studies to brand new people. We're going to start that class this Thursday night. But until then, we're going to do everything we can to reach those who have just wandered off. Lift your hands up all over this place. Just begin to think about somebody that you know that needs to be back in the house of God. Somebody that needs one more opportunity. That needs one more invite. We've got too many lost sheep of the house of Gainesville. We need to go find them and let them know that they are welcomed here. If you're here tonight and you're lost or you're backslid, you need to come on home. You need to let that revival begin tonight in you. God told me the next wave of revival is going to be people who once went here. But for whatever reason, they wandered off. That He's going to let us go find them and bring them back. If you're here tonight and you've got a lost loved one, a relative, or a friend, I want you to fill out this information. We're not going to harass people, but we're going to send them a heartfelt invitation. That there's a place here where God wants to reach down and help them. I know for some of them to walk in the door, there's going to have to be forgiveness on the pew. There's going to have to be an element of, of maturity and Christianity to rise up. But, but we're talking about eternity, church. We're talking about heaven. We're talking about hell. We don't want our families to be lost. We don't want souls to be lost. We want to do everything we can and find them and bring them back because there's value in one lost sheep. As they begin to sing, I'm going to invite this entire church to turn this front into a, into a prayer room. Turn your pew into an altar if you can't get to the front. God, I want to reach my kids. I want to reach my brothers. I want to reach my sisters. I want to reach my backslidden mom and dad. Maybe you're here and you haven't wandered off.
Christmas.